at some point we are going to have to do a whole show about how good this show sounds. Everybody, welcome to Down Ballot. We do this show live every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Pacific right here at twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. This show is followed up by a local love tonight. We have Melody Renee joining us live in studio to play a little bit of guitar for us and uh, try to answer our bizarre questions. What's up, Councilman? Not much. How am I coming through over there? Yeah, you sound good. Great, great. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I've seen definitely seen some better days, uh, but haven't we all? Um, but we're going to have some fun tonight. We've got some live election results coming in and uh, recalls happening as we speak, potentially. Uh, so uh, big news coming later on in Down Ballot. But I'm uh, glad to see you all. Find me on Twitter at T-H-E underscore Councilman. And uh, yeah, check out our website for more information about everything EchoplexMedia.com related. Great. So leading off, it looks like we have a story about today's uh, San Francisco recall election. 
Correct. I thought we'd get uh, to do a little preview of what's going to be coming up on Down Ballot Watch. Um, but this is a day of look at what's going on with Decision 2022. <laughs> no, I'm serious. The graphic's going to come up in, <laughs> really? in like two seconds. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, it, oh, come it, on. This is so, it's super, NBC. Super whack. Let's go. Yeah, go for it. Today for three San Francisco school board members facing recall. Voters today are headed to the polls. Ballots have been cast for weeks. Today in the Bay, Sharon Katsuda joins us live in San Francisco this morning. And Sharon, boy, there's certainly a lot writing on today's vote. That's right, Laura. Good morning. Yes, this issue really started boiling over when the parents wanted the board to reopen the schools during the pandemic, but it, they say that it seemed like the board seemed to have different priorities. Now, these are the three school board members at the focus of the recall effort, Gabriela Lopez, Fauga Moliga, and Allison Collins. Recall organizers say they would have liked to recall all board members, but only these three had served enough time to face the challenge. Both sides were out this weekend to get out the vote. Recall supporters are are critical of the district's efforts to rename schools in the name of social justice, all while the board kept city schools closed for in-person learning longer than other big cities. Okay, this part drives me crazy, because how long does it take to rename a school? I, depending, I mean, if, if you get community input and do all the stuff you should be doing, it can take, you know, months once you start the process. Um, but as far as, like, board time goes, like the Board of Education and talking and doing maybe one meeting maybe an hour of their time right they're not gonna they're not the ones spending all the time working on the actual you know chain name change and doing the the legwork they're just there to vote on it yeah that's what <clears throat> of course there's like all kinds of administrative shit that needs to happen but that's like not affecting the board's ability to make decisions about things like whether or not to open the schools truth um and it would just be another thing on the agenda like you know the amazingly enough elected officials and elected bodies can juggle more than one thing at the same time cities this even led to the city suing the board and district over how long it was taking to reopen schools our kids suffered through zoom school and mental health anguish uh because the school board didn't do its job it failed its job in safely reopening schools Another issue, the way the board handled the ending of merit-based admissions at Lowell High School. Opponents of the recall say it's a waste of taxpayer resources since a regular school board election will take place in November. Now, here's where you can find out where to cast your ballots if you plan to do it in person today. Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Now, if the voters, majority of them, support this recall then of any of the school board members, then Mayor London Breed would find the replacements and they would serve through. November. Reporting live in San Francisco, I'm Sharon Katsuda, Today in the Bay. So, there's no line two on this, right? There's no, there's no, if I'd like to recall this person, but... Not on this recall. Correct. So... Yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, option. So the mayor just gets to do it kind of by fiat. Yes, at least until their next, you know, the next election for those seats. Which is just in like fucking eight months or seven months or some shit. Ish, I think. I don't know. I forget. Um, for all of November, them that's, yeah. it, what, nine minus two is seven. So. Yeah, there you go. So thank we're, you. we're the <laughs> ultimate math nerds. I'm definitely not a math nerd. Um, although I used to know math, but I don't anymore. I definitely don't know the math that I used to know. Um. Yeah, so it's, uh, again, just another example of uh, recall. I, th I think the abuse, frankly, of recall. Because uh, this isn't, again, like you've said before, Producer Dave, this isn't a situation where laws have been broken, um, you know, money has been stolen, or, you know, kids have been mistreated. None of that. This is just policy difference, and it's people who are upset and they were having a sad because their kid has to wear a mask at school or something. I don't know. Or they, could, they couldn't send their kid to school so they could go to work or do whatever they wanted. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of pissed off parents um, who can gather signatures. So that, that and uh, Apple Pie will get you a bake sale. So this <clears throat> reeks to me of another issue, like a national issue. I think the reason that they're going and talking about the renaming of schools is this sort of anti-woke shit 
is really mm-hmm. big nationally, really big. Like, oh, the woke are fucking everything up. They're renaming the schools and fucking making you wear a mask. And like, I don't, they're just calling every like, so I think that it's kind of piggybacking on that sentiment. And I think that with there being kind of a lot of tech workers in San Francisco, I think that's a pretty good strategy on the call of the recallers part to try to tie it to that shit. That's like mm-hmm. really big on YouTube and Twitter among certain people, maybe that we talk about tomorrow night on, uh, our intellectual dollar tree show and and it's just really interesting that they chose that to um to kind of uh i don't know stick to or to kind of hitch their wagon to because like i said that's a huge national issue and it's kind of all it's vague enough that if they can hitch this to like wokeism that i think they can get a lot of like well-meaning kind of center left people to vote yes on the recall because they want to be like against rampant wokeism yeah, there's. A, I think there is a bit of it, a bit of that to it. Absolutely. Um, I think the uh, underlying all of this, and I think there's. It's tied to Shasta County. It's tied to everywhere you've seen these these recall efforts. Frankly, there is a there is a mentality out there. There is a through line. There is a, a narrative. There is a what you know astroturf um, of people. There's a, there's a, a strata of people out there uh, across all uh, all regions right now, and it's infecting all areas of government and it's, it's sort of like the pitchforks and you know ride people out of town in a rail kind of mentality right um and it's given you know normally these are the folks that are outside the city hall or the county building right they're picketing they're yelling hey hey we won't go you know um cult, yeah, culture of any kind has got to go um Instead, now they've got a vehicle because we're in California, they have a vehicle known as the recall, right? So they can use it. They can take all that energy they would be using to wave the signs and they can plug it into efforts like this that actually have some tangible impact and actually do, uh, you know, create change, whether it's good or bad. Um, So I think an effect change. So I I think that uh, the more these are successful, unfortunately, I think you're going to see more of them because I think that this strata of people exists and it's it's being fomented by the um the pandemic and by uh you know um the mandates and the masks and the the boosters and everything else uh and we're just gonna see more and more of it unfortunately it's it's it sucks it's it's gonna be a lag on getting anything done in government and it's certainly gonna i think preclude and um shy away a lot of folks a lot of really good well-meaning folks who could be really good public servants but don't want to put up with this bullshit yeah that and it's just um you know i think that maybe some of the people who are uh spearheading these recall efforts may have uh other ambitions be it a podcast or to just get on dave rubin's podcast or they may want to run for office themselves and they can be, you know, they can come in and be like, Hey, you know, I have experience spearheading a recall when we had bad, we had bad public officials and now I'm running for office because there was no line to, and I'm just curious to see what's going to happen in the next school board meeting uh, in San Francisco to see if like the issues from the recall, like just completely spill over into it. Even if the situation is completely different by November. Right. And I'll be interested to see if it is successful, you know, who the mayor appoints. I know the mayor was in favor of this recall, so she's certainly not a big fan, apparently, of the the folks who were, you know, of the school board itself. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who she appoints and uh, how they do and how they perform against the standard that has been set by the recall proponents. Um, what standard that is, I don't necessarily know. Um but I'm assuming they have some sort of standard. So we'll see if the new board members that are elected, this is kind of like a devil, you know, devil, you don't, right? Like these folks, great. You, you circulated a petition. Great. You won your low turnout, you know, odd time election. Great. You know, um, what now, <laughs> now you actually have to govern or you have to figure, or maybe the next people are just as bad as the first, right. Or they're just as politically connected as the first group. Are you going to run? Are you going to put yourself out there? Probably not. Um, and then, and what comes next they don't really think i don't think they really think these things out in that depth from and, what i can tell yeah and before we move on to the next thing if like the political left was any kind of organized movement there'd be fucking they'd be trying to or they'd be trying to recall fucking mayor london breed right now just for fucking rec- just for being in favor of all these other recalls you'd be like oh you like recalls huh 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you seem to be a fan of recalls, Mayor Breed. Here, here's right. one for you. Like, we don't like that you wore your ma- you didn't wear your mask at the club, right? So recall. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, watch, watch where you wait. That's all I'll say. Like, right? Um, it, it swings both. The door swings both ways. Just like with the uh, the filibuster, or any other legal political maneuver that benefits a minority over a majority, right? It um, it always swings both ways. So when you're in the minority, you will just you know love just as usually will love just as much all these tools that the these a holes are using now <laughs> to fuck shit up for us. We would be more than happy to use the same tools to fuck their shit up. So on a completely like unrelated note, the chat is proud of themselves for having canceled your Kamala Harris um, uh, <laughs> calendar. <laughs> oh, no, they, no, no. OK, the chat. Much <laughs> love to the chat. Much love. I will say that the the calendar was canceled by the fact that it's no longer 2021. So I just don't have a new calendar yet. I've got this nice one over here. This like a uh, animals of the world one. But it's got this realtor's picture in the middle of it. So I'm going to try and like, you know, just use some privacy screens or something and block the realtor's picture because it's so cheesy but the pictures are really sweet it's like a panda and a seal and a giraffe so i'll get that up there for for next week great eyes um chat by the way <laughs> well but yeah no I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not canceling kamala yet she may be a cop but um she might just well be the next president of the united states just goes to show your connections a little better this week than last week too because they can they can fucking see your wall a little bit better <laughs> <laughs> That's the that's the the webcam on this lovely Lenovo um, ThinkPad. Oh, it's the built-in camera. So, yeah, it's the built-in. I I didn't have time. I was troubleshooting so much to get some get a system that worked. <laughs> so we didn't have any lag tonight. Um, that I didn't have time to plug my my uh, webcam in. So I will I will get that upgraded for the next round. So you're running Linux this evening. I am running Linux. I thought you'd be proud. That's probably why everything works better. So let's move on to yeah. winners and losers. Um where there are no winners or if, if people are winning, that's just not who you're fucking rooting for. If you're a viewer of this show or a, a member of our community here, uh, what's Correct. the first and one? It, what's the first one? Well, it's nothing about Ukrainian people. So it, uh, this is just a, a lagging portion of the YouTube clip. Once it starts, we'll, we'll know it's bad. Um, so uh, as you may have heard um, on the news uh, or somewhere, uh, the California has lifted their, well, at least lifted their mask mandate, partially right like you, you can now if you're vaccinated in some counties in california most counties um not wear a mask indoors etc cetera, etc cetera. um there are some exceptions but there's a couple of counties in in Santa, uh, the bay area including our very own producer dave santa Clara county um that are kind of on an island um and gonna hold that mandate in place for a little while longer Moving you forward on Bay Area COVID hospitalizations with encouraging new signs. The most serious cases are declining. Now, as you can see right here, by this time next month, that total is expected to fall 62 percent. So we could see those hospitalizations sitting around 3000, just a little bit above there. Now, right now, statewide, there are close to 8200. This comes as a state mask mandate set to expire. Today at the base, Bob Riddell, he's live for us in Pleasanton this morning. And Bob, some of those places, they say, yeah, you're going to still have to wear those masks inside. Correct. Good morning to you, Marcus. You're talking about Santa Clara County and the city of Vallejo. The mask mandate will not lift tomorrow when it lifts most other places, including Alameda County, where I'm at. So starting tomorrow, you'll nowhere, no longer need to wear one of these when you go into your local coffee shop or other local business. Again, that's starting tomorrow as long as you're fully vaccinated. So just after midnight tonight, the state of California will lift its indoor mask mandate. And as you can see on this map, eight of the nine barrier counties will go along with that guidance. Santa Clara County says the rate of community transmission of COVID is still too high. will be several more weeks before it lifts its restrictions. And the city of Vallejo is keeping its indoor mask mandate in place until a city council can meet and discuss this on February 22nd. There are exceptions. You still must mask up inside places like schools, hospitals, and public transit. Also, courthouses in SF, San Mateo, and Alameda County still plan to require masks indoors as well. I think one big difference between the last time we took masks off in June of 2021 and now is that we have more options to keep people away from the hospital, even if they get infected and they are at risk for getting serious disease. So it's really important when somebody uh, is older or if they're immune compromised, uh, or if they have multiple medical comorbidities, particularly if you're not boosted. Uh, to call your healthcare providers, see if you're eligible for Paxlovid, the oral agent for COVID, or monoclonal antibodies. 
uh, we have more and more of those uh, increasingly and they do work uh, exceptionally well at keeping at-risk people away from the hospital. <laughs> By Thursday, Governor Newsom is expected to announce plans for how California moves to the endemic phase of COVID when it comes to issues like community surveillance and testing protocols. Reporting live here in Pleasanton, Bob Riddell, today in the Bay. Community surveillance sounds very interesting. I mean, I know what it is. It's not what you think it might be, but it does sound very interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure that that was really good messaging from the news there. No, yeah, very much so. They might have wanted to explain that a little bit better. Community um, surveillance yeah, makes you, me think of like Peter Thiel's Palantir, just like sending little robots around to watch what you're doing. <laughs> right. In the in the street lights and the potholes and popping out of the, the sewer lines. Um, <laughs> local news, pretty sure. They're gonna, we, we need a bot that can like track down local stories like that. That would be great. That'd be Take really, pictures. Really great. Local news Take bot. Some video. Right. Um, but yeah, so I, I love the, you know, Santa Clara County and Vallejo. So, um, there's very few things that Vallejo and Santa Clara County have in common other than being in the Bay Area. Um, and this is one of them. Uh, so do you feel safer living in Santa Clara County, Producer Dave? Well, for like a variety of reasons, not just the, like as far as COVID goes, not just the, the fact that the city, the county is a little more aggressive with uh, mitigation measures, but also we got a hell of a public hospital here. Very true. It's uh, top notch, one of the best in the nation. Num uh, uh, level one trauma center and recently renovated thanks to your tax dollars. Thank you, Measure A20 or 2008. Yeah, 2008, 14 years ago. Um, so, yeah, uh, very good healthcare system, a public healthcare system, I might add, um, accessible to everyone. Uh, and all children in the county are in fully insured no matter what. So, we, we do pretty well here. We could be a model, you might think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we ex I feel like if Santa Clara County were to export a good public health system to the United States, it would almost make up for having exported Facebook to the world. Um, <laughs> truth, <laughs> truth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, you have to pay an arm and a leg to actually live here and, you know, um, and to enjoy all of those benefits. So, yeah, it's up upsides and downsides. But we shall see. I, I, I do say this much. Um, you know, Sarah Cody is getting death threats, like literally every day. Um, I've actually read some of the stuff that gets sent because it gets copied to all the supervisors. And of course, you know, some uh, county staff and the good wife occasionally gets to see it. So I get to see it. And there's some really frightening shit that gets um, sent around. So uh, kudos to them for just being strong and, you know, doing what they can to keep us, keep us safe, keep us honest. Um, I really, I do not envy them in that role. She has a security detail too, right? She has a security detail that follows her home and watches her house every night. Like that's, it's real. Yeah. We're talking by the way about the head of public health for Santa Clara County. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Not an elected official, not a, not, you know, a, a bureau, basically a, a health bureaucrat. Um, so, uh, so kudos to her for, you know, now she's national, national famous. So good for her. Maybe she, maybe she should run for something. Oh yeah, that's the she's like, Oh, I got death threats as like the head of public health, so let's run for office and see how that goes. <laughs> right. That's what's that's what's not gonna happen. No, probably not. Unless after, you can run for health officer. You know, after which you this can't. after this is over, I say we uh we we put a ballot measure up to just to give that lady a bit of a golden parachute. <laughs> there you go. Why not? We can we can just lobby for it, don't need a ballot measure. Just lo lobby the soups for it. Um, all right, well, Moving right along to another issue that uh, has been tra uh, sort of tracking along with um, COVID. As we all know, there's been a little bit of uh, unemployment fraud, but there's always an employment fraud, by the way. Let, let, let's not be, let's be real here. Um, and it's you typically a very minuscule portion of it, just like most government agencies. Yeah, there's some spillage, but for the most part, they work pretty well. Well, there have been some goofs during, uh, during COVID, as we all remember, uh, you know, prisoners at like Scott Peterson, I think was getting unemployment while he was at San Quentin. Um, so there've been some mistakes to be sure <laughs> heads are going to roll. Um, but now, uh, as part of the, the repentance EDD is, is trying to make good and, and clean up their roles. The U S department of labor has agreed not to make workers repay benefits. They received by mistake during the pandemic, as long as they were not obtained by fraud. However, the EDD still must verify that everyone was eligible. 
About a million Californians, maybe you or someone you know, are required to submit extra proof or pay back their benefits, and many say the EDD is not making that easy. Seven on your side's Michael Finney has a young woman's story of frustration, Michael. One million people are having to get involved That's in amazing. this. I mean, that is a ton. And what we're talking about is non-traditional employees, gig workers, contractors, part-timers. They received a special pandemic benefit. Now they must show they really were working and weren't imposters filing phony claims. But get this, many say the EDD is once again putting up barriers. So I do have evidence. I just cannot get it to them. Colette Bowen of Morgan Hill has been trying for weeks to show the EDD this proof. She really was working at a Kendra Scott jewelry store when the pandemic hit. And then everything shut down and then they let us all go. Colette was a college student working part time at the mall when stores shut and she got laid off. The EDD granted her pandemic unemployment benefits. But now, nearly two years later, she must prove she deserved them. I don't know why I need to prove anything. When I applied, I got accepted for a reason. They have to read through your case. She's among the nearly one million workers who received this alarming email from the EDD before the holidays. All must show they were really working before the pandemic hit or return the money. Colette found the email just recently in her junk folder. It coming to my junk folder, I thought it was just kind of a scammer. It said she must upload proof to her her EDD account or pay back her benefits. That's about $6,000. That is definitely a, a big amount. I mean, I'm a young person. I work an hourly wage job. So she dug up her W-2 and earnings summary, but when she tried to upload them, she could not. I get the error code every time. Turns out the EDD locked her out of her account with no way to upload and a deadline this Friday to submit her proof. It's not like we just decided to ignore their requests. I just sincerely cannot get into my account. Thank you for calling the Employment Development Department. She's tried calling the EDD many times. We're currently receiving more calls than we can answer and are unable to assist you at this time. So yeah. No one picks up. So she mailed paper copies to the EDD, no response. She contacted Seven on your side, and we asked the EDD how she's supposed to comply if they locked her out of her account. The EDD said it will be offering a way to mail in documents for those with technical problems, but would not say why she was locked out. I'm not in a position where I could pay back that sort of money, and I know that I'm not at fault and I shouldn't have to. So yes, it is very frustrating. The EDD says many folks may have been overpaid by mistake as rules kept changing throughout the pandemic. I've reported a great deal on that. The Labor Department said today it will forgive many of those payments. Good news. However, folks like Colette must still show they were really eligible all of the time. Now, right. they knew that at the beginning. Most of these people are sure. because we're not ripoffs. You're going by the rules. Right, right. Still, so, you know, we've got to fix the problem. Yeah. I mean, you've done so many stories. Thank you, Michael. Sure. So you're telling me you didn't, you young person with tons of bills and rent to pay, you didn't just put the $6,000 into a interest earning checking account or a savings account or a CD or invested in the stock market, you actually, what, what'd you do with it? Where's the $6,000 that we gave you that you shouldn't have? She bought those ugly ape NFTs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she bought some Dogecoin, boy. <clears throat> to the uh, moon, to the moon, I tell you. Right. No, I'm guessing it's in her rent, right? Or it's her other bills. Yeah, like, her shit, landlord fucking has it like, now. It's like, you gave me $6,000, government. I'm sorry. Like, I'm, it's, I spent it all, yo. I, I bought a, I bought a sixer and paid my rent. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty fucked, honestly. Uh, they're, it's like they're making a mistake, you know, big, <laughs> a mistake and a misunderstanding worse, um, and causing a lot of pain. But then again, this could be one of those situ isolated situations where it's just this one person who reported it, right? And the nine hundred ninety nine thousand other people are having no trouble. But who knows? Because um, I didn't see them come with like the you know, oh, we we contacted you know just randomly fifteen other people on this list, and you know they all reported problems. So it could just be this one one account right but that, i think it's her. because of the kind of segment it is seven on your side generally focuses on one person who's having a problem with some kind of institution yeah absolutely seven on your side and the um i forget what it's called on nbc bay area chris chamura's thing but uh yeah 
uh, or NBC has your back or some shit. Um, absolutely. You know, this is, this is totally just consumer reports kind of news making. So it's not news so much as it's, uh, it's reactionary, uh, compl- complaint department, the department of complaints department, <laughs> the compartment, the department of complaints compartment, sir. Compartment. There you go. The Department of Redundancy is department. Um, <laughs> well, uh, hopefully they'll sort that shit out. And you know, uh, not not that you know prisoners don't deserve a little love, but they shouldn't be getting unemployment benefits necessarily. Um, but uh, hopefully they'll sort that shit out and get the money in the right people's hands, or at least if they gave it out already, recognize that they're they got their heads up their ass if they think they're going to try and get it back. Um, what do you what do you think about the idea of prisoners getting? unemployment benefits for six months prior to release. So they have a little bit of money when they get out. Oh, I'm, I'm actually all in favor of, uh, prisoners, especially state prisoners. Well, I mean, that's prisoners are right. State, sorry. Uh, or federal. Um, I'm all in favor of doing everything we can to make sure that, uh, prisoners who have, um, who are, uh, allegedly, you know, ostensibly being rehabilitated, right? I want, first, I want to make sure that they are rehabilitated, right? I want to make sure that the system where we have is, adequately serving them right and, and allowing them an opportunity to rehabilitate and to advance themselves um i have a family member who's prisoner in the state system got his aa and is now working on a ba right so he's going to come out of prison it's going to be a while but he's going to come out of prison much better off educationally than he uh-oh um i've lost your audio Allow. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, I certainly can. Weird. I touched the wrong part of the of the laptop. Um, yeah. So uh, it, uh, getting benefits and actually knocking time off of their their uh, service time by taking classes, right, and, and bettering themselves. But yeah, at the end of the day, and they're making a little bit of money to do the jobs that they have them do all around the yard, right? But nowhere near you know, any kind of serious change, right? Or, or money that's going to be helpful at all. It's like pocket change, right? To get you, you know, it'll get you some, get you where you need to go, but it's not going to help you live. We need to do a whole lot better by these folks. Um, and if it takes, you know, erroneously giving them unemployment benefits, then fine. Um, but yeah, in general, we need to do a whole lot better. i um, figure out a much better system for um, how we can reintegrate folks into society. Because people shouldn't have to be serving you know, these life sentences without parole or just getting back and just push back in the system because when they get released, they don't get enough services to keep them out. Right. Um, people go to prison a lot of the times in jail because they're, they've run out of options and they do something stupid. So real quick, before we, real quick, before we move on here, we got Montreal player who I'm not even familiar with just raided us. Also Justin freaking raided us. That was the double raid fucking twice as many goats. Fuck. Yeah. Thank you everybody. If you're listening on the podcast, a raid on Twitch is if somebody ends their stream, and they want to send their viewers somewhere, they can send them somewhere good or they can send them to down ballot. <laughs> well, speaking of down ballot, we're going to have our results here in just a little bit from the SF elections board. Um, by the way, they also have a state assembly race that's happening right now to replace uh, David Chu, who was um, uh, appointed San Francisco's city attorney. Uh, so he, uh, they're going to have a, they're having the uh, vote to replace him tonight as well. Well, our next story is somehow South American gangs are tied to a string of Peninsula home burglaries. This sounds like some fucking stranger danger crime fucking. This sounds like some shit from the 80s that would be on the news all about the fuck South American gangs. Is it MS-13? For fuck's sake. All right. I'm already mad at this thing before we even started playing it. Let's go. Let's run it. Bay Area Police. South American gangs are burglarizing neighborhoods across the state from San Diego to San Mateo County. Hillsborough PD says it's had more than 20 break ons in the past three months and only 30 in all of last year. They say South American gangs are specifically targeting wealthier neighborhoods and usually case the homes before they break in. They say the thieves really? are mostly after firearms, jewelry, or anything else they can sell on the black market. Well, there's more things to focus on in Hillsboro. I mean, the homes are multi, multi multi-million dollar homes. We're locked, loaded, ready for action. Yeah. Camera systems working, alarms. Hillsboro PD say the gang of thieves is likely the same one that's been targeting vacant homes in Atherton. Police are asking people to be on the lookout for vehicles with two or more men driving slowly through neighborhoods, casing homes, and then report them to police. 
producer Dave, producer Dave, I've I'm I'm shocked. There are thieves and they are targeting wealthy people with lots of shit in wealthy neighborhoods and they're casing they're casing the joint first before they strike. So all that's going to happen here is I mean, everybody's done it before, right? You're like, let's drive through a neighborhood with houses worth $10 million and take a look around, see what their front Mm -hmm. doors look like. Everyone has fucking done it. So now what's going to happen is when people do that, if they look like you and me, nobody's going to call the cops. But if they maybe don't look like you and me. They look like these anchors right here on on Fox right here. Yeah, especially the anchor to our left, maybe. They'd be like, oh, we're supposed to call the cops if people are driving slow. And what's even better, like if he was wearing that suit and I was we were wearing this shit, right? We he would still get pulled over, right? Hundred percent. Right? Probably. Maybe. 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 Um but yeah no I I I again this is one of my favorite and our I think our favorite angles of local news is that they don't actually like there's this catch to get you to watch the video and get you to pay attention to the story and it's in the first line they never bring it back around they never actually explain who are these south american gangs where are they coming from where did they originate why are they suddenly targeting california is there some is there some lack of you know uh, rich people in south america uh, that they cannot rob and they have to come here or just easier targets did, did they get a, a, a you know a, a group rate on you know, uh, South American airlines. I don't know. Um, or, but or is it that there the was one that somebody, that the cops busted who had some kind of tenuous connection to what the police believe is some South American gang. Right. But even if it was that, I don't even think they explained that at all. They just sort of said South American gangs. And then they pivot to these two Tony white people. Um, one of, one them of them was really locked and loaded, locked and loaded. She's ready to fucking rock Karen. Um, so they pivot to Karen and Bob talking about how, yeah, Hillsborough has got a lot of rich people. Um, and they never get back to the actual, like the, the draw of the story, which is the South American gangs, um, which makes it a perfect down ballot story at the end of the day, because we'll never get it. We'll never get a resolution. <laughs> All right. So we got one more here. We got a uh, man. Funeral expense donation jar was stolen for a, but everyone oh, no. loses. And it was in Benicia too. So everyone loses. No, just across the board. Officers want help catching a thief who was caught on camera stealing from a donation box. Yeah, KTV's Greg Liggins explains the money was meant for a very important purpose. Mike Haro seems to be a man everyone likes. For the past five years, he's been a beloved employee at Bob's Liquor and Food on West J Street in Benicia. That changed Tuesday when 26-year-old Haro suddenly died from what may have been a heart attack. He was such a wonderful kid, you know. He was, for us, like our son, you know. For whole town, whole town is missing him. He was such a great boy. Customer Eduardo Garcia lives across the street and saw Haro almost every day. Mike was a great guy, man. He was, he was absolutely, like, not just your regular, you know, registered person (laughs) you know he was like he actually like cared about you the store put out a donation box to help haro's family pay for funeral expenses but the man walking toward the store in this surveillance video saturday afternoon would temporarily derail that plan police want to track him down you see him inside wearing dark sweatpants sweatshirt and a cap with what looks like an s on the front he acts as though he intends to buy beer but what he's really buying is time to steal After distracting the woman working the register, you see him grab the donation box and take off. Wow, that's, wow, that's incredible. It's the Amazon driver. But Hmm. karma, karma comes to get you. Instead help somebody will stole. That's the shame, right? The store estimates hundreds of dollars were taken because so many people have been generously giving. I knew Mike a lot. I came in here a lot with my brother. Um, he was a very sweet guy, and so when I heard, it was very unexpected. So that's why I put money in there. A new donation box has replaced the one taken, but cash doesn't stay inside long and is put in a safer place. So the stolen funds will be replenished. What can't be replaced is Mike a guy who apparently did his job in a unique and special way that touched the lives of others. You can talk anybody in the store, anybody, customer. I never get any single complaint last five years. People were always, oh, you are so lucky you have Mike. You are so lucky. He wasn't a regular dude. He was a really special guy. 
Authorities are urging anyone who recognizes the suspect in this photo to call Benicia Police. The Police Officers Association there has made a donation to help with some of the stolen cash. Also, friends have set up a GoFundMe page to help the family with funeral expenses. Greg Liggins, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And it looks like they hit their goal, so I guess that that's a winner at the very least. But uh, yeah, God, <laughs> fucking, how awful do you have to fucking be, man? Or hard up. Like, you know, or both at the same time. That's just. Whew. Yeah, I just feel like <clears throat> I just feel like. The person who works at the liquor store is like really a pillar of the community. Like they're they like they they deal with a bunch of bullshit, probably. But like the people that work at my liquor store are great. I fucking love them. I like know yeah, their I, names because I, I asked. They remember my name. Like I walk in and the guy's like, I have a new stout. Like right as I walk in and I'm like, I'm just here for an energy drink. And he's like, but I have a new stout. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I, very, I very much like your, your liquor store folks. They're, they're very good people. It's unfortunate that we're in the situation that we're in and you're not stopping by there more often on your way here. You know, I know. I don't know them by name, but they, they've seemed like very, very genuine and very nice people. And they have a they great, call me they, boss. They have a great, they have a great selection there, but I'm just telling you like, <clears throat> If you like live within walking distance of the liquor store, you know the liquor store person because you you don't even have to drink to be pals with the liquor store person. You need a pack of smokes, you need a yeah. snack late at night. You want you want a coke, right? right. Maybe or some you, coke. Maybe you're playing the lottery, and if you're playing the lottery, by the way, don't stand there and act like you're at the casino and fucking do the thing like right. I fucking hate that shit when I'm in a hurry and somebody in front of me is treating the lottery like they're like uh, some kind of high roller at the fucking at the Bellagio or some shit. It's like, shut the fuck up. Take your tickets and get out of here. But the liquor store person <laughs> never is rude even to that person. Right. No, and, and you're right. Pillar of the community for sure. And they have to, with good reason. Um, uh, they deal with everyone, right? From the banker to the butcher to the whatever, Bartleby maker or whatever, the, the line, however the line goes, the teacher, the post office clerk, right? Like everyone comes to the convenience store or the liquor store sooner or later um, to get something. And uh, yeah, you're, you're, they're either down or they're not. So good on them for looking out for their boy. Um, I'm glad that they they got the money uh, coming through the GoFundMe. Um, but yeah, whoever this person is, like I feel bad taking a penny from the take a penny jar, Bruce Dave. Oh, I don't. They'll, they'll take a penny t thing because um, I want to leave it for the next person. I feel like I should have a penny for some reason, but uh, when I don't, I do take the penny. But taking the funeral fundraising jar, yeah. It's bad losers but anyway that's what i call it winners and losers mostly losers all right san francisco get your shit together here's a trailer for i guess a movie that's coming out it's going to be a series um uh from our good friend big ed shaban at uh, nbc bay area he's doing a, a whole series on saving san francisco from what i guess we're going to have to see from itself but this is the trip this is the trailer for his investigative series. Award-winning journalist. They're monstrous. Big, angry monsters. Big, crazy, just gonna get you monsters. Even if I scream, no one's gonna hear me. I just know he's gonna come back here. He's hearing these voices telling him to do these things. Do you think he's become obsessed with you? Yeah, I do. And so do the detectives. I just keep expecting him to be dead. And then I, every day I wonder if he does die, would I even know? It's frightening. It's creepy. There's this guy who just watches me. This is a free call from an inmate at the San Francisco County Jail. If you just look at what he's accused of, he's so much more than the accusation. There was nobody I thought that would be more successful. He's a tragic character in his own life. He was an English teacher, creative writing, and teaching juniors and seniors. Intense guy with a real spark of life. There's no one like him. He tried to burn down a church. He escaped from federal <laughs> custody. You have a victim who fears for her life and thinks your office isn't doing enough. 
he keeps slipping through the cracks. So we went searching for how this all started. There he is, class of 87. And now he's one of San Francisco's 8,000 homeless? You're convinced it all dates back to one particular day. Mm -hmm. What happened? It's just hard to see. He's not the problem. He is a symptom of it. We have the uber, uber wealthy and then the very, very poor. Shanty towns that compare to some of the worst in the world. How does a city with a $12 billion budget look this way? Dealing with each of the people that are struggling requires a lot of work. What I'm proposing will make people uncomfortable, and I don't care. It's such an incredibly wealthy and resourceful, beautiful city. That's the sad irony. It's not so pretty anymore. You step over piss, you step over garbage, you, and the main thing, you step over our people. And there's beautiful people that are being wasted, lost, left behind. It should be better than this. And it can be, and it will be. It's a pretty difficult uh, situation to be so misunderstood. I have a lot of thoughts. Go. <clears throat> um, fuck this documentary, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. Um, I don't, it seems to be tying together a bunch of things that are just problems that big cities face. Sometimes times are better and they face these problems less. Uh, like if yes. you think of San Francisco in the late nineties, <clears throat> there was like money falling from the sky and uh, working class people could find good jobs in the city because sort of the, the cup over did overflow with during the tech boom in a lot of ways. Now that we're in like a prolonged different sort of tech boom, they figured out how to put like a, um, like a bathtub under them so that the cup, when it overflows, it just goes into their bathtub. <laughs> so a lovely I analogy. I don't know who the person they're talking about is, but I'm also kind of glad they didn't just like dox the person on, on uh, this. I'm real, I'm real curious to see what this documentary turns out to be, but I don't think it's the local news's job to put out a documentary that to me, it looks like is demonizing the poor in their community. I don't think that's the local news's job. I would agree with you there. And it seems, it almost seems like a, uh, some sort of dichotomy here where there are two different things where they're, you know, it starts out with this very, you know, fear. Well, I, I intentionally fear inducing, right. If you were a fearful type, um, ominous music and the sound effects, they hadn't posted results yet. I was kind of surprised, but, uh, I'm sorry. I'm getting a little distracted here. Um, uh, and, it's all like you said. It's exactly what that what that appears to be demonizing folks who are just homeless or going through some shit, right? Um, more than likely mentally ill, uh, and yet towards the end of it, we're talking about oh, but this is they're a symptom of a bigger systemic problem, and we've got this you know these shanty towns and these people we need to help, um, and then it comes back to London breed, and we're gonna fucking just send more cops in, and that's how we're gonna solve it, and people are gonna be uncomfortable. So I'm trying, I'm struggling to grasp sort of what the angle is or what the, you know, what the message is or the news is here. Um, like you said, we all know big cities, cities in general just have a lot of issues. Uh, you put a city in through a pandemic, bigger issues. You put a city through a pandemic after a recession and we've really barely recovered from that, right? The first bubble busting, this is what you get. Um, and yeah, we have to deal with it. But it shouldn't be a shock to anyone. It shouldn't require a five-part docu-series. Which, by the way, just real quickly on on our friend, the reporter here. There's really, in my perspective, I know I understand Walter Cronkite and all these great reporters, right? And they everyone knows who they are, and they always appeared in their pieces. I've never thought a reporter should have to appear in their piece, right? It should be good to know who the reporter was because it's their job. Um, and they're doing their job, but I never thought it should be about the reporter in any way, even if it was an expose like this, right? Like, why is he, why is his face there? I could, I should be able to hear him ask a question, but I should never really have, know what the guy Shaban looks like. Frankly, I really don't care. It's like um, the it YouTube videoification of local news, kind of like, 
where yeah. people <clears throat> like you, you go onto YouTube and you're going to find a lot of things that are, you know, 10 or 15 minutes where they're calling that shit a documentary. Right. And so I think yeah. that's what they're going to be doing here. They're going to be making 10, 15 minute, <clears throat> essentially YouTube videos with like a high budget. And you're right. It seems like they're trying to make the reporter, the story where he's like going out to find the scoop or whatever. And <clears throat> that's all well and good for a fucking TV show about a reporter. Right. But it's not, but he's not the story. Right. Um, and yet that's how he won his award. Right. And his national award was for an expose similar to this. I'm forgetting what it was. It was on the jails. It was on one of our local controversies. He uncovered um, and did an expose on, or maybe it was the one about um, autistic youth in schools getting like arrested for, uh, for, I don't know, drawing on the sidewalk. Anyway, long story short, that's how he got his name. That's how he got his award. He's going to keep doing it and they're going to keep flaunting it. Cause you know, that's what they do. They're trying to you know get business and get ratings. So um, at the end of the day, I think I fault probably the reporter the most. <laughs> the network is just trying to make their money. Um, but who knows if it's him or if it's the producers or, who it is that's influencing it but yeah i just don't i don't really care who this guy is i just want to hear the story and you guys don't do good enough jobs in local news telling those stories and telling all the angles for me to care who you are <laughs> i well, care and, more about the questions you're not asking and the story here seems to be like a, basically a collection of the stuff that fucking tucker carlson will show on tv when he talks about california mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. <clears throat> it doesn't seem to be that you know, I guess they, they seem to have interviewed a, a guy at the end who seemed to have, um, I don't know if he was homeless or maybe previously was homeless or whatever, but <clears throat> like this is, this is going to be, we're going to, we're going to keep an eye on this though. Cause this is like, this is not too terribly far away from that red, white and blueprint shit that those people did up in, uh, <laughs> up in Shasta County. I mean, it's just, <clears throat> it's like, yeah. it's, but it's, it's certainly like ready made. I'm going to, I'm going to guarantee you it's going to be 10 to 15 minute hits that are ready made for youtube for a certain audience on youtube who wants to look at the controversy and wants to kind of wants to kind of almost look at san francisco as if it's a fucking zoo or something you know 100 percent. they've got the youtube playlist all ready to go um and yeah that was insulting to me at the end just that one bringing the one dude in go giants he had giants hat that was very nice um probably because he needed a hat uh not because he's necessarily a giants fan um but yeah, to bring that one dude at the end to just like represent all of the unhoused folks, right? Um, and say, why well, it's going to get better. It's got to get better, you know? Just that, can you, hey, can you, you know, give me a jig or say something really funny with a, a black accent, please? Um, that's just what it seemed like to me, really frustrating and uh, and annoying, really. And you're right, it's going to be just a bunch of YouTube hits. And, and then they'll be done with it and they'll move on to the next thing, right? And you know, if the if the housing problem or whatever it is that they're trying to address the drug problem on the streets doesn't get solved, it's not no skin off their nose. They did their reporting, so now they can walk away. Yeah, well, it's I mean, it's fine to report on these things, but yeah, I feel like I just feel like they're this is going to be an attempt to make a spectacle of the problems yeah. of San Francisco. And <clears throat> I'm telling you, this is going to be aimed at a YouTube audience outside of San Francisco. Yep. Oh, national though. This is national kind of stuff. This is the stuff they're kind of trying to hype. Um, it's very overly produced and yeah, you're, they're, they're aiming for audiences that aren't the choir for sure. Right. And they're supposed to be reporting on the city to inform the people of the city. Correct. Primarily. Correct. Speaking of informing or in, informing the people and reporting on what's happening in the city. Um, we do have some news, uh, again, coming out of the DA's recall in san francisco um so recently uh folks have heard of uh the police chief being a little upset with uh chesa boudin the district attorney for going after some of uh their their boys and girls for excessive force um so they pulled a an mou with the da's office they're talking trash they're trying to you know politically hurt him so he's fighting back because he actually has some receipts about some shit that the pd is pulling that is 10 times worse actually did happen um and is legally reprehensible unlike the things that he has been accused of which were all pretty much standard fare san francisco district attorney chesa bodin opened a news conference today by calling out investigative methods of the san francisco police department we're here today to denounce the practice of using rape and sexual assault survivors dna without their consent of storing their DNA indefinitely, 
The district attorney was surrounded by victims advocates who joined him in voicing their concerns, saying this violates the already delicate trust victims have during a rape or sexual assault investigation. It is re-victimizing the victim. It is unacceptable. We need to address this. If survivors knew that their own DNA evidence would potentially be stored and used against them at a future date, even less survivors would come forward. D.A. Bodine says he's raising concerns after he came across a sheet of paper late last week in a current case. He says the document shows San Francisco police detectives compared DNA from a rape kit collected in 2016 with DNA collected at a felony property crime scene recently and identified the former victim as a current suspect. What's more, he claims this could be a statewide issue. Our conversations with uh, leadership at the SFPD crime lab suggest that this is a routine practice not only in San Francisco but at other crime labs across the state. The San Francisco police chief says his department is looking into the details of how the crime lab handles rape kit DNA samples. When pressed about the allegations made about other agencies, the DA's office wrapped up the news conference. I did reach out to the San Mateo County District Attorney and the Alameda County Sheriff's Department and they tell me that they do not use rape kit DNA as part of investigative tools. The District Attorney in San Mateo says they do keep DNA samples on hand as part of quality assurance to try to use it to rule out the possibility of cross-contamination of samples. In San Francisco, I'm Sergio Quintana, NBC Bay Area News. Okay, thank you. But they reached out to the DAs. They didn't reach out to the fucking police departments who are the ones who are apparently doing this. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Uh, well, jolly good show. Jolly good show. Uh, well, yeah, so like we said before, if you're going to come after Chessa, you best expect him to fight back because he's not, he's not afraid. He is definitely not shy, and he's definitely not um, bowed by all of the pressure from uh, the establishment. So good on him for pushing back what do you think about the uh the accusations at the very least or the 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 uh practice of using rape kit dna stored rape kit dna to solve or to not solve but to um you know in in current investigations sounds shitty <clears throat> sounds like because I, I don't so. you go in there right and you you get your you get your rape kit done and it doesn't probably doesn't occur to you that that's I mean, sure, they have, they, they're going to have your DNA right there. It's going to be part of the rape kit. But it, you maybe, you don't even think about it in those terms, right? Yeah. I was actually, uh, I need, I guess I need to know more. I, uh, is this some sort of database that they have put their DNA, they, like the cops have put all the DNA into, right? So it's a, and then they get DNA from a scene, plug it into the database, they get a hit, right? Oh, this is our suspect. It seemed like almost, I don't know, it's kind of, maybe it's implied this person might have been a suspect already and they instead of getting the dna from the suspect like doing actual police work they found that she had that she had uh had a rape accusation or at least had a rape kit collected and used that dna and had that dna to test against the the crime scene dna i mean fine someone committed a crime whatever but it's this is this is way beyond fourth you know fourth amendment search and seizure kind of shit like yeah you should i i think they they have a legit case um if they get busted if they get popped for the crime i think they have a legit case on fourth amendment grounds that this is going to get thrown out right Ill um, yeah illegal search and seizure even if they were part of the crime right even if for whatever reason maybe they're down and out and they just got rolled up with the wrong people and they were part of the burglary you know whatever it's i <laughs> you still got to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt and you got to use um you know, you can't you can't use uh private information or private uh people's private medical, especially medical information too, which is pretty much what it is when it's being, when it's being um, collected that way. Right. Like if it was collected with the understanding that, you know, you're a suspect in a criminal matter, that's one thing, but this is collected after you've been victimized. Right. So a little, a little sketchy, a little sketchy. So it's kind of anyway. disappointing that we don't have any results in at all from the San yeah. Francisco recall. I'm a little surprised. I don't, I mean, I haven't, I didn't look at uh, any sort of like announcement of, about when they're going to post their results, but it's going on 830. So their polls are closed as far as I know, unless they kept them open late and they haven't posted a darn result yet in any of the recall or the election day summaries yet. So maybe we're, uh, and we're on the same page. So maybe we're missing, missing the boat somewhere as far as where the election, that's, that's where I know the results are getting posted. 
Shasta um, had their had some results in by eight last time, like right by the time their right. polls closed. I understand that counting yeah. votes in Shasta County for one district is um, <clears throat> a lot different than trying to count votes in San Francisco. So maybe it takes longer. It's actually the reverse. You would that you would think so, but it's actually the reverse. The bigger cities theoretically have bigger elections departments, more volunteers or more, more I'm sorry, volunteers, more election workers that they hire temporarily and volunteers um, in their counting ballots and, you know, and doing all the work. Um, so in theory, they have a lot more firepower to be able to manage and get, you know, results posted. Frankly, they should, I mean, even Santa Clara County, which tend to, tends to have its head a little bit on sideways when it comes to election results, even there here, you know, we get, whatever has come into that point or whatever uh, vote by mail or, you know, uh, dropped off ballots had come in like the day before that all gets, has all been counted and gets posted right away. Um, Cause then you, and then you get a really good read of how the election is going to go, frankly, because um, it's not like it used to be where you can kind of track, Oh, well, election day is going to be so much more different from people dropping off their ballots. So many people drop off their ballots now that the early returns are going to match for the most part, what happens over time. And that's kind of what you saw in Shasta. Although the initial return was very close um, as the, the trickle started to come in, it did, it did swing to the recall. So, well, in that case, it was because the mail-in ballots probably got counted first and the folks likely to do mail-in ballots were likely to be against the recall. And so it's usually like the yeah, opposite, generally. the opposite way of elections, how it usually happens, right? Where, the 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 big cities people are waiting in line well past the uh the, the time that that the polls close but they leave the polls open because once you're in line you're in line and so the big cities right. come in last and you and it usually swings the, uh, towards the we'll say towards blue generally at right. the end and in shasta county because of the mail-in ballots it swung the other way because a lot of those people were afraid of i don't know george soros putting a microchip in their mail-in ballot or some shit you know what i'm saying right. Well, we, we do have less and less though people voting at the polls, uh, and there's going to be fewer and fewer and fewer, but the people who submit their ballots late poll and on election day at the polls, right? They profile a lot like election day voters. So we still, have, we still will have those nuances, um, but we'll see, uh, stay tuned, check out SF elections, SF board of elections to find out what happened. Um, and, uh, we'll, if we want to do one more thing before, uh, we hand it over to you to, Take take us cruising into local love. Please stick around tonight for local love. Producer Dave, who's our guest tonight on local love again? It's Mel Melody Renee. I do believe she's uh, out in the. We, we'll call it the green room, but it's actually just my fucking living room. And uh, she might be watching this and listening to this right now as it's uh, piped out to the TV uh, over my local network here via OBS Ninja or Video Ninja with about five milliseconds of delay. So it's not even a. It's almost in real time. So. She's, she's like, oh, I'm out of here. Fuck, fuck. I didn't know this crappy show was on before Local Love. I got to go. You guys are on your own. <laughs> Bye, chat. No. Uh, no uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hope, hope everyone stays tuned in on, on Twitch and in the chat to Local Love and have a little fun. Um, and I mean, there is a green couch, I think, in your living room. So maybe that, we can just say she's on the green couch. Possibly. Possibly. Or maybe, it's only, maybe it's only green because the lighting or the just how long it's been there. <laughs> no, there's, there's like new What's recliners and shit in my living room, actually. Ooh, fans. Um, all right. Well, I, I want to let you get to it. So, uh, one more thing we do like to focus on, uh, animal interest stories when it comes to another thing, generally speaking. And, uh, once again, our good friends, the wild pigs are back, not in Almaden this time, but close. Okay, they are big and they are hungry. Wild pigs are terrorizing some neighborhoods in Morgan Hill. Homeowners say they're worried and frustrated because they're getting torn up, but they can't seem to get help from any agencies that they claim caused the problem. Here's NBC Bearer's Robert Honda. The neighborhoods around Anderson Reservoir are mostly scenic and green, but many of the homes are not so lush these days now that packs of wild, hungry pigs are out here roaming. This is <laughs> eight wild pigs Annette Beatty took video of from her car as she and her husband pulled into their home off Holiday Lane near Anderson Reservoir in Morgan Hill Saturday night. I just really couldn't believe it was happening. I was afraid to get out of my car. How much damage did they do to your yard? Well, you can see right here. I mean, this was all covered in this time of year, you know, it's beautiful, all covered in green. 
It's been rototilled. Annette and other members of the Holiday Lake Association filed damage claims with the Santa Clara Valley Water District, arguing the draining of Anderson Reservoir for seismic retrofitting forced the pigs to look for water and created a pathway to the neighborhoods. Valley Water needs to coordinate with SCC Parks and the city of Morgan Hill to put traps on public land to trap and eliminate, to trap and, and reduce the wild pig population. We can't just get a gun out and shoot them. So we really don't... <laughs> it sounds like he wants to. ...do-it-yourself method to mitigate the pigs. The Water District rejected the claims, but said it has its staff researching options. Our staff is looking at working with other agencies in the area who have more experience with... Oh, funny. He used to be a reporter with ABC7. Them ...rooting around at night. It's really scary. Association leaders say they want the Water District and other agencies to move quickly. They say they want to protect this lower meadow, the neighborhood's designated open space, and the evacuation site in case of a wildfire, an area the pigs have not discovered yet. In Morgan Hill, Robert Honda, NBC, Bay Area News. An Roxy, area the pigs, recall. an area the pigs have not yet discovered, is something we used to say when we were throwing raves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, forget what I was going to say. That that takes uh, the cake right there. I'll be here all night gonna, or all week, literally yeah. all week. <laughs> Rim shot. Um, no, it was good. Uh, I was going to remind folks that when this happened, you know, when this came up in Almaden, what, two or three years ago, right? Um, it could have been three weeks ago or two, three it. years ago. Yeah, it, it's, right. it's hard to tell. A Apocalypse now. It happens every year anyway. Um, <laughs> but we had, as soon as they actually did institute an emergency ordinance uh, to allow folks to euthanize, quote unquote, pigs, and that included um, shooting them. Um, so we, we actually allowed people to discharge firearms. Um, you know, in, in within city limits who were not police officers. Um, shocking. So, so yeah, they, they will, it, if you push comes to shove, they will allow you to shoot them, sir. Um, but if you want to try some other DIY methods for, for capturing wild boar, like, go uh, for it. A Rube Goldberg, gonna... a Rube Goldberg device to kill the fuck <laughs> wild boar. I'm, I'm just thinking of the little, like, you know, the little mouse traps, right? Little cheesy old school mouse traps, like snap and get some on the like their whatever their hoof. I don't think that's that's stopping them from tearing your lawn up. But um, most people seem really happy to be on TV, so I don't know if they're really all that bummed about their their lawn getting torn up. Um, <laughs> yeah, mostly when the boars come, everybody's like, "Oh shit, do I get on the news?" Yeah, right. Who's going to call the news first? Who gets to call them this year? Um, <laughs> I'll give I'll give you that though. That would that would be a freaky sight. Like you, I drive home and suddenly like I've got eight wild boars in my front yard tearing shit up. Like you know. Interesting. I, I definitely wouldn't be getting out of the car and, and provoking them and taking video of them necessarily. Well, maybe video, but definitely not provoking the wild boar. Wait till they move on, get their grubs, move on. Um, make sure the dog's inside. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, my friend, it was another fantastic episode of, of DB. Yeah, Councilman, why don't you read us out? All right. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us again. Uh, if you're in the Twitch chat, stay there for local love, fantastic local music, live local music coming up next. Um, please be sure to tune in every week, uh, every Tuesday night at 7.30 Pacific for our locals show, uh, Down Ballot with the Best in Local News. Next week, we will have the results of the SF Board of Elections recall or a school board recall. So please stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, stay cool. Get vaxxed, wear your mask, pants are optional. Peace. <laughs>
And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the bang Enjoy the bang I turn and head back to the bar For a refill, man, because you know where we are We're headed out to the car To smoke another one And another one Now just when the magic starts kicking in Now here we left playing And you know it's time to head in Alright everybody, now it's time to grab a new drink Spark it if you got it and then pass it to me yeah. We do what we want And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band We do what we want What we want to do And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band Enjoy the band the show tonight is down and dirty in five, so we're headed outside to spark up another joint. Now, who's got my light? A stoner E, of course. Shouldn't you be inside? I'm all up in this bitch, being who I gotta be. I'm fucked up like the US economy. The truth is, is that I don't think logically. Stoner E, take you on a psychedelic odyssey. Now, inside, motherfuckers is rocking me. And outside, shit, we smoke a lot of rockin' me. Rocky the Rolly, you the sexy girl be jockin' me. Ain't too drunk to fuck, but I'll probably do a sloppin' We do what we want, what we wanna do, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. Dance with the band and enjoy the band. We do what we want, what we wanna do, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. Sit back and